Today, we're looking at the absolutely horrific story of David Allen Gore and Fred Waterfield, the killing cousins. They terrorized the Treasure Coast in Florida during the 1980s. We're going to explore the duo's toxic partnership, their murders, and the legacy of their brutality. Hi, welcome to 10 Minute Murder, brief and bingeable true crime. I'm Joe, the host, and thank you for joining today. And coming up on a future episode of this podcast, I will be dedicating an entire episode. It's going to be an extra one. You won't be missing a story, uh, but it'll be an extra episode thrown in there where I just do nothing but answer your questions. I consistently get enough questions to certain things that I thought it might be valuable for me to just answer those questions on the podcast. Those of you that have that same question, but just don't care enough to email me, um, I can answer that question. Uh, Some of those are true crime related. Some of them are not true crime related. Um, some people just asking me questions about, oh, well, how do I get started in podcasting? What what would be my first steps? Um, and I've answered that a, a, probably a dozen times in the last couple of months. Um, also, what microphone do you use? That, and that, that kind of thing. So a, a technical aspect of the podcast to um, true crime related aspects of the podcast. How do you choose stories? What stories will you not do episodes on? What stories are you thinking about doing episodes on, but you're kind of holding off? And I'll tell you that, that answer right now. It's John Benet Ramsey. I really want to do it, but I don't even know how to tackle that one right now. So it can be true crime related or it can be just anything under the sun. So if you've got a question of mine and you have not asked me already, send it in an email, joe at 10minutemurder.com. Joe at 10minutemurder.com. And if you don't mind, put your, uh, your first name and your city that you live in uh, so I can identify you without identifying you, if that makes sense. And like I said, coming up on a future episode of 10 Minute Murder, I'll throw in an extra episode where I'm just answering your questions. All right, before we get going with your story today, this is your reminder to subscribe wherever you like to listen to podcasts, connect with 10 Minute Murder on social media. Links are in the show notes of this episode, as well as at 10minutemurder.com. If you are brand new to this podcast, first of all, welcome. I'm very happy that you're here, but make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss any future episodes. Now to today's story. David Allen Gore was born August 21st, 1953 in Vero Beach, Florida, and he was the eldest of nine children. He grew up in a troubled household with his father, a former sheriff's deputy, physically and emotionally abusing him and his siblings, and he was diagnosed with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, and he was prescribed amphetamines to treat that condition. He also had a history of substance abuse and was arrested several times in his youth. When he was a teenager, He was fired from his first job ever. He was a gas station attendant, and his boss found that he had drilled a hole in the wall to look into the women's bathroom. Gore went on to be an auxiliary sheriff's deputy, and he used his badge to commit some of his crimes. He also worked as a caretaker of a citrus grove, and that provided a secluded area in which he would take victims. David Gore dropped out of high school in the 11th grade, and he enlisted in the Navy, where he was discharged due to poor performance. After his discharge, he began working as a mechanic and later became an ambulance driver. In the early 1980s, Gore began to sexually assault women in and around Vero Beach. In 1983, he was charged with sexual battery and served two years in prison. After his release in 1985, Gore began murdering women in that area. But he wasn't alone. Gore had an accomplice, his cousin, Fred Waterfield, and the pair were dubbed the Killing Cousins, and they would often prey on teenage girls. In 1976, prior to their committing any murders, police jailed and questioned both Gore and Waterfield after Angela Austin, who was 20 years old, accused them of raping her at gunpoint. The cousins insisted that the sex was consensual, and they were not charged in her case. David Gore targeted at least four additional women who escaped with their lives around that time. Fred Waterfield, by the way, was born September 29, 1952 in New Jersey. He was a former standout high school football player. Gore and Waterfield had sort of an arrangement, namely one where Gore would spot, stalk, and secure potential victims for himself and Waterfield in exchange for cash payments from Waterfield. The cousin's first two murder victims were Yin Ling, age 17, and her mother, Hsiang Ling, age 48. 
On February 19, 1981, Gore accosted the younger and brandished his auxiliary badge, his sheriff's department badge, to lure the teenager into his truck, where he drove her to her own home. Once there, he encountered the mother and kidnapped both women. Gore later claimed that the mother, tied to a tree, slowly choked to death while he and Waterfield raped the daughter. The cousins dismembered the two women and stuffed their body parts into oil drums, which they buried. The pair's third victim was Judith Daly, 35 years old, a former Pierce resident visiting from California. On July 15, 1981, Gore secretly and covertly disabled Daly's car at the beach so that she would be in need of assistance, and then he offered her a ride to the nearest telephone. Gore drove her to a secluded area and met Waterfield there, whereupon both men raped Daly. Gore claimed to have disposed of Daly's body in a swamp. One week after Daly's murder, Gore unsuccessfully attempted to abduct a teenage girl using his badge again. The girl's father filed a complaint, and Gore was stripped of his badge. Days later, police spotted Gore hiding in the back seat of a woman's car, carrying a police scanner, handcuffs, and a pistol. For that, Gore was convicted of armed trespassing and sentenced to five years in prison, but he was released on parole in March of 1983. Just a couple of months after being released, on May 20th, 1983, Gore and Waterfield again teamed up. They encountered Orlando hitchhikers Angela Lavalle and Barbara Ann Byer, both aged 14. They picked them up. Gore and Waterfield raped, killed, and dismembered both of those girls. These would be the only two crimes for which Waterfield was convicted, and he was sentenced to two consecutive life sentences for these two murders. Lynn Elliott, age 17, and Reagan Martin, 14, were students at Vero Beach High School and were hitchhiking to Wabasso Beach when Gore and Waterfield picked them up on July 26, 1983. They took both girls to a house owned by Gore's parents, but Waterfield took off. He left. He was spooked because on the drive over, he saw his sister. Gore later told the police that he bound and placed the girls in different rooms prior to raping them. As he was assaulting Reagan, Lynn, with her hands tied behind her back, escaped out to the driveway until she lost her footing. According to Gore, quote, I kept running after her. She tripped and fell, and I caught up to her. Gore told the police, I started dragging her back, and she was trying, like, resisting, fighting me, so I threw her to the ground. That's when I shot her in the head. David Gore shot her twice at point-blank range, only to realize that a neighbor boy riding his bicycle had witnessed the entire incident. The neighbor alerted the police, which led to a 90-minute standoff between Gore and the law enforcement. Cops arrested Gore and rescued Martin, who was found in the attic, naked, handcuffed, and with electrical cords tied around her legs. On December 7, 1983, Gore led police to the remains of three of his six murder victims. These victims were Barbara Ann Byer and the Ling mother and daughter. He also admitted at that time to killing three other girls and two women. On August 10, 1983, Gore faced a grand jury charged with first-degree murder, two counts of kidnapping, and two counts of sexual battery. On January 6, the following year, Gore's trial was moved from Vero Beach to St. Petersburg, Florida. Two months later, on March 16, 1984, the jury convicted him of first-degree murder, and after an 11-to-1 vote, he received the death sentence. That summer, the Supreme Court affirmed David Gore's first-degree murder conviction and death penalty. On January 21, 1985, Waterfield was convicted of the murders of Byer and Lavalle and received two consecutive life sentences. March 3, 1988, Governor Bob Martinez signed Gore's death warrant. Fast forward to July 5th of 2007, the Florida Supreme Court confirmed David Gore's death sentence. He was executed by lethal injection at 6.19 p.m. on Thursday, April 12th, 2012, having exhausted all legal appeals. As David Gore lay strapped to a gurney in the death chamber, he said, quote, I'm sorry. I've had remorse. I'm not the man I was back then. I don't fear death. David Gore's life and crimes have been profiled in several documentaries, including the 2019 film The Killer Cousins, which you can find on Netflix. His case has become one of the most notorious serial killer cases in Florida, and his name is often associated with the term Florida serial killer. He's been the subject of numerous books and articles, and his case was featured in the television series The First 48. 